not go public with it back then? Well, at the time, we didn't know what well, we didn't know what had happened or who was responsible. So I just felt better and safe by putting it away until another time. You felt like something was going to happen to you? Yes, I did. In fact, the, that night, I spent the night with my mother-in-law because I was afraid to stay at home. I really had no idea what I had on my film. When did you realize that this was more than just another filming of a president going by? Probably I've realized it all along. I just didn't, uh, for a long time, I did not feel safe having this film because I really didn't know what it would say or what it was showing. So I just put it in a lockbox and have kept it all this long time, but it's time now for the public to know and to see these film. But even before now, there were a select few who were able to gain access to your film. Who else has been able to see this rare footage? It was uh, the Warren Commission subpoenaed the films, and um, which would be the House Select Committee had them, and then my family members at one time. They've been locked away for years. And I, I just knew to everything there is a season, and I felt that when the time came, I'd know it, and it's here. You have, you still have the camera that you were using. I'm going to ask you to take it out for us and show us what it is. Oh, yes. How old is this camera? Well, I bought it before the assassination. I really don't know. Uh, it's a Bell & Howell 8mm color. Uh, we did colored film of the, uh, of the parade and all. And I really don't know the age of it. Of course, Bell and Hal is not in business now, so I wish they were. <laughs> I'm told that we have some of the footage that you shot back at the studio. So I'm going to ask, basically, where were you? What vantage point did you have? Where were you standing, and, and what were you seeing at the time? I was in the old red courthouse. I was the clerk of the 162nd District Court with Judge D. Brown Walker. And we knew that the that Kennedy and was coming to town, and of course I was very fond of Jackie, so I took my camera to work, and I was in the on the third floor of the old red courthouse, and back then you could raise the window, and you know, see everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. You had a very uh, not a very, but you had a different vantage point than the famous film that we see, you know, all the time, the Zapruder film. How is yours different from what he saw? I have him in my film. <laughs> yes, right. um, and of course I was up looking down on everything. There was a, a big difference, and of course when the president was assassinated, people were just falling to the ground. Everything went crazy, and um, we in fact did not know that he had been assassinated at the time. And then of course it didn't take long when the they, the word began to get around there that ever that it had happened. And um, we thought, I thought somebody was popping firecrackers from the knoll because I heard a, like, pow and a pause and pow, pow, you know. You'll n I'll never forget the sound. And there, like you, there was smoke coming from the knoll like you had, had popped some firecrackers, you know. So uh, it, then w it registered, you know, that it had, what had really happened and everything was chaotic. People didn't know which way to go or fall down or run. It was kind of a... It became a scary point in time. Now, the smoke coming from the knoll is the reason why you have slightly a different version of um, what had happened there from the Warren Commission's theory that it was Lee Har Harvey Oswald from the old uh, School Book Depository building. What do you think? What is your theory on Oh, I think definitely that there was more than one person involved. That's my personal opinion. And, uh, of course, I haven't talked to the Warren Commission. Uh, I haven't spoke to anyone. No one has ever talked with me about my film or what was on the film. Mm -hmm. So I found that unusual because I've always been right downtown. You know, I'm at City Hall now, and I was at the county for eight years. So I couldn't understand. Then I see these things. This is the Warren Report. This is about Kennedy. But if my name isn't in there, it isn't all of history because I saw it from a vintage, vantage point that no one else could see. Mm -hmm. See? Thank you. I'm going to ask you to hold on for a moment. I know that uh, you've been working with a uh, local historian, and uh -huh. uh, I believe that Mark Oakes is back with uh, Tim back at the station, so we're going to toss it to you for now. And uh, Mark Oakes apparently has had a great deal of work with uh, Mrs. Pascal about this film. That's right. So. In fact, Mark joins us now live in the studio. And Mark, this is your this is your work. This is your profession. How did you stumble across Patsy? Well, I had read about her through FBI documents, which are only partly declassified. 
which we're working on getting the answers as to the discrepancies that the FBI has seen in her film. Continue to this day to be partly classified? The, the blacked out area that we see is, is classified information? Exactly. And through the JFK Act, we are going to present it, this to President Bill Clinton, and we are going to find out the answer to this problem that okay. lies in her film that the FBI has kept censored for 32 years. Now, you've seen the entire film. We should make it clear we did not show you the entire film because you all are trying, in fact, to sell the entire film. What did we not see, and why is it important? Uh, Patsy was the only person to film the grassy knoll 15 seconds after the assassination from a high elevation. She not only caught Bill and Gail Newman laying on the ground in the entire picket fence and grassy knoll area, but she also caught Abraham Zapruder jumping off his pedestal and running for his life, which is what he said he did, but we had never seen that to that point. I believe that there is movement behind the fence, which is what the House Select Committee in 1979 concluded, and the man who concluded that stands by his acoustical evidence that, that supported that conclusion. But there was a shot from back there. They said a fourth the shot fence. was fired from behind that fence, and they have tried to undermine this conclusion, but I believe that Patsy's film will uh, provide the answers to and support the House Select Committee uh, findings. You see then, does it appear clear to you, you see movement on the grassy behind the fence? Behind the fence. Puff of smoke you alluded to? Uh, now that I'm not going to say for sure because I want some experts to look at this film. Uh, we are interested in selling it, but I'm not an expert. I do have a friend, uh, Greg James, that uh, is my video consultant who has looked at the film and he feels that there might be smoke uh, on that film, but I will say there's definitely movement behind the fence, and uh, from that angle, uh, with uh, technology, we can blow that up and find out and let the chips fall where who, they may. Who might be interested in buying this? Uh, there are probably several people that, uh, uh, that do documentaries that would be very interested in that, and uh, also um, there's a man in Florida that, that uh, collects this information that would be interested. Uh, and uh, there are several people of, of interest that that would be to. It, with all due respect, I can understand if you have it in your possession, you're going to say, gee, I'm going to sell it and, and make some money off of this. On the other hand, it's a part of history. Should it be sold or should it be handed over to some experts to analyze and become a part of history? Well, what you have to understand is the general public doesn't know there were over nine movie films of the assassination taken, and none of those people have donated theirs. Uh, Abraham Zapruder's family charges 30000 and up to view it, or to use it. Um, Orville Nix took a beautiful film of the assassination, and they charge for showing it. It is part of history. And if Patsy uh, was rich, if I was rich, I would love to do that. I would do that today. I would insist on doing that. But I think that after all this time and, and, and the people that you know, have made money on their other films, I think that Patsy deserves some sort of monetary value for her film and, and she deserves that and, and uh, um, it's just a matter of um, of that uh, after all these years that I think she deserves something more. Can, we can ask, I think we can go back to Patsy and ask her a question. Patsy, you indicated that you were actually afraid and that is why you kept this uh, locked away for 32 years. Of what or of whom were you afraid? Well we really didn't know who, who we are, were afraid of because it was such so chaotic we did not know who was responsible for this. In fact, we still don't. So I didn't feel comfortable having this around, and so I, my attorney kept the film for me in the lockbox all these years. Why now? Why 1995? Because after, all, after 32 years, it's time. I mean, so let it be. Okay, Mark, do you, was she legitimate? Did she have reason to be afraid, to be concerned for her life? There was, was several discrepancies on people's films that uh, they either reported were, even the Zapruder film was tampered with. Uh, you can clearly see there were splices in it. Orville Nix has uh, complained for years, the family of Orville Nix, they don't even have the original film. Uh, the family of Orville Nix said that uh, UPI gave it to the House Select Committee and the House Select Committee said they gave it back to UPI. There's no original film. Uh, there's a lady who took movie film purportedly to be Beverly Oliver on the south side of Elm Street. Nobody's ever seen that film. There's a lot of film controversy, and there's even film controversy in Patsy's film, and we don't know what's in it. If a lady took color movie film, and it's about one person doing the shooting from the school book depository, then why black out a document? Why not release the information and let us see it? 
uh, this is ridiculous to have a document about a ladies' movie film that's still blacked out after all these years. Absolutely ridiculous. And like I said, we will have the film enhanced and we will let the chips fall where they may, whichever way is fine. But don't hide the information. Don't lock away the documents. The public needs to see this information. Okay, final question. I mean, you think you have, based upon the law, you do have uh, the ability to get this, whatever this information is in this FBI report, removed. Whatever it was that the FBI may have seen in this film 32 years ago. There's a man in Washington now that is uh, with the uh, Records Review Board that is examining this and Patsy Pascal's interview and he is going to, I don't know the procedures, the technical procedures, but he is uh, going to present this to the president and I believe that the law says that he has 30 days to either uh, restore this redaction or to leave it sealed up to the year 2039. Okay. And then we'll find out. If it means nothing, fine. But logically, let's talk about blacking out a document about a ladies movie film. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand the connection. If here. it doesn't show anything, why block it out? Exactly. Okay. Mark, thank you very much for joining us live this morning. And Patsy and Linda, thank you very much for joining us live as well. Thank you. Fascinating information. At noon. It's been locked away in a safe for 32 years. We'll see a film taken the day of the Kennedy assassination. Congress takes yet another look at the Branch Davidian disaster. An historic federal trial goes to the jury, and if he's convicted, this man could get the death penalty. And vandals hit a North Texas church. We will have the latest on that. Good afternoon, I'm Tim Ryan. Another piece in the puzzle of the Kennedy assassination is put in place today. It is a film shot almost 32 years ago, the day President Kennedy was shot. Linda Wong is live on Dealey Plaza with this intriguing story. Linda? Tim, intriguing is right. So intriguing that the woman who shot that film calls it the missing piece of the JFK story. Now, we've all known of the famous film clip shot by Abraham Zabruder, but this is from a very different vantage point, not from the ground, but from the third floor of this old red courthouse. Her video shows the president coming down Main Street and then the motorcade racing by under the underpass and the frantic crowd scene after people realized the president had been shot. A local historian claims the four-minute clip also shows smoke coming from the grassy knoll, which would support the 1979 conclusions of the House Select Committee on Assassinations that there indeed was a fourth shot that was fired. I think that what we see on this film will support their conclusion that there was a second shooter from the grassy knoll, that there was a fourth shot, and that there was a conspiracy in the murder of John F. Kennedy. I do want to point out the fact that the film clip that you saw is a very short clip just for obvious reasons, because they do plan on marketing it out on the open market. And uh, Patsy, Patsy Pascal, who is the person who shot the film, also wants you to know that that is not the original. The original is in color, and it is also very clear. Very clear and in color. OK. The attorney has it in a lockbox. It's kept in a lockbox. It's been there for about 32 years. 32 years. Could you tell me why so long that you have kept this under lock and key, and you haven't really said anything about it? Well, I just didn't feel the time was right. For a long time, I was afraid to let it be known that I had the film because I really knew, didn't know the story behind why that they did this. And of course, we were all very fond of our president and we're very proud that he came to Texas. And so, it, but it was scary not knowing the real story or why that this was happening. And then of course, it was, no one ever talked to me about my role of film or, you know, to question what I saw or, you know, and of course everything looked to Oswald, but there was smoke coming from the knoll. And I made the remark, why is someone popping firecrackers? You know, the, m my words were, some nuts popping firecrackers, because the smoke was about what a firecracker, you know, two or three of them would, um, would be. So we saw that looking down on the street and but it, nobody ever asked a question about it. And so I didn't press it because I was afraid to, for anyone to know that I had the film. So I just feel like the time has passed and it's time that, that it go into history. Now that short film clip that we had seen did not show the pictures of the smoke coming from the grassy knoll, but the fact that that video does exist and there's some discrepancy on whether or not there really is smoke coming from that area right. but that would blow the whole theory that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was the only shooter now you believe that theory is a sham 
I definitely think it's a sham. I think that he might have been involved, you know, and probably.